Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel and today we're going to talk about tow ratings. One, because I do a lot of towing, I have a bit of a background in the RV industry, and two, because this is a confusing topic for a lot of people. So what we're going to do is, we happen to work for a Kia and Hyundai dealers, that's who I work for, but this is really re uh, relevant to anybody interested in what a tow rating is and some things to look for. So what we're doing today is uh, what we call our Kia Hyundai classes, which are usually two to five minutes long. This one's going to be a little longer, and we're going to talk about tow ratings. So, what I have is uh, in front of me in many different pages in many different ways is the Santa Cruz owner's manual. Because if you're going to be towing, you should really be reading the owner's manual to talk about some of the things that uh, you should be aware of when you're towing. Now, when we talk about tow ratings, which is really what this video is all about, a tow rating is often put in a brochure as 5,000 pounds, 3,500 pounds, those kinds of numbers. Uh, sometimes 2,000 pounds in some of our other vehicles, and sometimes it's not rated to tow. So when we talk about a tow rating, what that generally is across the automotive industry is it's an SAE tow rating. That's Society of Automotive Engineers. And they have a number of specifications that they look for for the vehicle to complete tests without breaking, falling apart, and doing all kinds of different things. And then they you know, allow the manufacturer or somehow they come up with a tow rating through that process. Um, so when we say it's a tow rating, it may have exceeded that tow rating. It may, you know, it has to at least meet that tow rating in order to do that. But there's a lot of things in the manual that kind of confuse you. For instance, if you buy a Santa Cruz, it says it can tow in, uh, in Canada, for instance, it can tow 5,000 pounds. In the US, some of them tow 3,500 pounds. We'll talk about that. But let's work with the Canadian one of 5,000 pounds, just because that's the information I have in front of me. So when you see that in the brochure, you say 5,000 pounds, my trailer weighs 4,000 pounds, you put a little bit of gear in there, we're good to go, right? Well, maybe not. And it kind of hints at what you're looking for in your owner's manual. So the first uh, thing, and again, I'm going out of order in the owner's manual, but I really like the Santa Cruz uh, in particular, that owner's manual, because it talks about um, some limitations to that. And a lot of people kind of start faulting Kia or Hyundai when they go through, well, how come the brochure says X, but then when I go through the owner's manual, it actually says less. And without saying it in the owner's manual, really what they're talking about is how the vehicle has been tested, which is again, to the standards of the Society of Automotive Engineers, the SAE testing. And that is probably different than how you and I would drive. It's probably different than how you and I would think. So it's important to understand what they're saying. So when we talk about a 5,000 pound tow rating, uh, they list very clearly that is with two occupants, which is good because sometimes we see tow ratings based on one occupant. What is an occupant? What is a person? Uh, this seems like something we shouldn't have to ask, but um, I'm sure if you've met people before, you've probably figured out that they're not all the same size. So they define what a person or what an occupant is, excuse me. Each occupant weighs 150 pounds, but each occupant also has 15 pounds of cargo in the cargo area. So an occupant, according to the Society of Automotive Engineers, is a 150 pound person with 15 pounds of cargo in the cargo area. Um, I weigh about 175, 180-ish pounds sometimes. Um, I'm heavier than that person, and I'm not a huge guy. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And what I like about the owner's manual here is it goes down. If you have four occupants, so two occupants, it can tow 5,000 pounds. If you have four occupants, it tows 4,700 pounds. If you have five occupants, it tows 4,550 pounds, which is good information because basically it's saying, hey, if you're going to load up your vehicle with five occupants of 165-ish pounds of gear and people, uh, then you can tow 4,550 pounds. So that's a good number to start with as well. Hey, if I'm going camping, I'm going to take my family, which means it may be your tow rating is less. Now, I also want to switch to the trailer side because you might still say, hey, I got a 4,000 pound trailer. We're fine. Well, your trailer is very similar. It has a brochure weight rating. So let's say it's 4,000 pounds in the brochure. And then it has a real weight rating. So you can find stickers on the trailer. You have to look for it. That's a whole other video. We can do that. And maybe I'll do that again on this channel. Uh, but there are stickers on the channel or on the, <laughs> excuse me, trailer that show you what your actual weight is. And in general, it's more than the brochure. 
And then it also has a sticker on your trailer that tells you how much, if you have a camping trailer, for instance, with water in that trailer. So there's a whole bunch of things you got to keep in mind. And some people will have a boat, for instance. My boat weighs 3,000 pounds, but you'll forget that sometimes your trailer weighs 1,000 pounds as well. And sometimes those are estimates. Oh, the trailer probably doesn't weigh more than 600 pounds, but it might weigh 1,000 pounds. And those things all matter. So we want to talk about tow ratings, keeping in mind that the tow rating lowers on your vehicle as you put people and cargo in. We also want to talk about the GVWR, which is how much weight that vehicle can take. If you open the driver's door of your car, you're going to find a sticker on the door jam that tells you the carrying capacity of that vehicle. In the case of our Santa Cruz, it's 1,411 pounds on the very top trim level. That's what the sticker says. We've shown that in videos in the past. That also can be affected by trailer towing because your tongue weight, which they tell you how much tongue weight should be on a vehicle, but your tongue weight is part of your cargo carrying capacity. So on some vehicles, they have very little cargo carrying capacity. And even though they can tow, say, let's say, call it 3,500 pounds, uh, the tongue weight may put the vehicle itself overweight. And if you always see this, you see a lot of vehicles really squatted down, the trailer's here, the vehicle's there, and they're really squatted down. That's not a healthy way to tow. So in the manual, they talk about things like trailer sway control. Uh, there's different things you can do. Um, the the um, On Kia and Hyundai vehicles, mo many of them, including this Santa Cruz, your traction control, your stability control can account for trailer sway. In other words, it can figure out that your trailer has swayed and it can do things to help prevent that. The problem with that is it doesn't do anything until after the trailer is in a sway and then it's just like a traction control or an ABS. It tries to help you, uh, but it's not going to prevent the sway altogether. You want to do things that will prevent sway. So the other thing that's interesting to me is when we talk about towing a trailer at speed, you and I think, okay, we're going to lower a trailer up. We've got 5,000 pounds of capacity. Let's call it with five passengers, 4,550 pounds of capacity. We've got a 3,000, 3,500 pound trailer. And now we're going to drive on the highway. Uh, in Canada, speed limits are at least 100 to 110 in most areas. A lot of us tend to drive a little over the speed limit. Well, they tell you very clearly what this vehicle has been rated for. And again, this isn't so much a Hyundai thing. It's the SAE. Uh, so always drive your vehicle at a moderate speed which they say is less than 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles per hour, or the posted uh, towing limit, because some areas they have a towing limit, which would be lower than the regular speed limit. So keeping in mind, if you're towing, you should be towing at 100 kilometers an hour if you're towing within your tow rating. So 5,000 pounds with two occupants, but no faster than 100 kilometers an hour. That's what it's rated for. And then if you're like me, and you want to tow in hills, there's two more things to consider. Going up that hill on a long uphill grade, do not exceed 70 kilometers an hour or the posted towing speed limit, whichever is lower. So that's another thing that we always don't think about is when you're towing up a hill, the rating is based on going up 70 kilometers an hour. So if you are towing your 5,000 pounds and everything is still within reason and uh, you've got the tongue weight correct, you've got it all done, then you start going uphill, you can't go, they don't want you to go above 70 kilometers an hour. So those are things that to keep in mind. Uh, this is again, Society of Automotive Engineers, how they test and how they come up with a tow rating. But there's more. With increasing altitude, the engine performance decreases. From 1,000 meters above sea level and for every 1,000 meters thereafter, 10% of vehicle slash trailer weight, so that's trailer weight and gross vehicle weight, must be deducted. In other words, if we take five people, our 5,000 pound tow capacity, these are five lightweight people, 5,000 pound tow capacity is down to 4550, and then we go up a hill and we want to drive faster than 70 kilometers an hour, well, that's already over our tow limit, and then we end up on the top of that hill and we're a few thousand, let's say we're going over the mountains in BC or Quebec or, or Newfoundland, as you're going over those mountains, those are several thousand feet high or a thousand meters high excuse me and uh, if you get you know two thousand meters up uh, you also have to decrease the weight rating by 10 20 percent depending on how high you are so you take 45 50 decrease that by another 20 percent and that's another 800 pounds if i'm correct off of that so what i'm getting at is if you buy something with a 5,000 pound towing capacity a lot of the time your maximum tow capacity for real world driving, for passengers and gear and cargo, and keep in mind that's not the trailer loaded or the people loaded, this is the lightweight people, you're probably around a 3,500 pound towing capacity 
as a regular weight. And then you have to watch your speed and keep those things in mind as well. We also have to talk about trailer brakes. A lot of people get really out of sorts because Kia and Hyundai vehicles don't have a trailer brake controller built into their vehicles. Uh, very simple thing. We're going to have a video on this uh, later. I'm going to talk about towing some more on this channel. Uh, you can get dongles and other stuff that um, work and without having to mount anything in your vehicle nowadays. It's 2021, 2022 now. Uh, so there are a lot of better options to get trailer brake options for the types of towing that most of us are going to be doing. So we'll talk about that in a future video uh, here as well. But I want to keep in mind that if you are buying a vehicle to tow and you say, okay, the vehicle tows 3,500 pounds, my trailer is 3,200 pounds, we're good to go. That's probably not the best uh, way to do things because your trailer tow rating may not be the way you drive or the way you think. The other thing to keep in mind is the size of the object. If you have a large travel trailer, eight feet wide, you know, nine feet high kind of thing, that's pushing a lot of wind and that will matter as well. Now, a nice thing about our tow ratings on the Kia and Hyundai vehicles is if it has a tow rating, it does not require an additional cooling package. It does not require an additional axle ratio, uh, something like the Santa Cruz's competitor. The tow 4,000 uh, pound tow rating uh, tow package uh, requires extra cooling in there and it changes your axle ratio. Your axle ratio is allows it to tow that weight, but it also decreases your fuel efficiency. That's something to keep in mind. So something like a uh, Maverick, if you're thinking, oh, it's got 4,000 pound tow capacity, so I can take my uh, 3,500 pound trailer, you may be well overweight on a Maverick, whereas on something like a Santa Cruz, you may not be. So just a couple things to keep in mind. I want you to pay attention to how it's rated. There is a speed uh, rating, which is something to keep in mind, especially near the top of your tow ratings. Uh, there is a difference once you head up in altitude. That makes a difference. There's a difference in maintenance on your vehicle as well. Even little things like you shouldn't tow for the first 2,000 kilometers. Where have I got that here uh, on our, some of our vehicles? Uh, do not do any towing. This is a Santa Cruz, for instance, with your vehicle during its first 2,000 kilometers in order to allow the engine and transmission to essentially break themselves in. They do a break-in process, so they don't want you towing there. The other thing is a lot of our transmissions are sort of smart transmissions. They learn how you drive, and they don't want you in those first 1,500 kilometers to um, drive while it's learning how to drive, learning how you drive. So all sorts of things to take care of. If you're buying a vehicle right before vacation, you want to keep in mind some of those things. So tow ratings. Big thing to keep in mind is this, as you add passengers, even lightweight passengers, um, that will lower your tow capacity. Your tongue weight takes away from your cargo carrying capacity. Uh, your trailer weight is very rarely what it says in the brochure. It's usually higher. Uh, trailer brakes are legal in some areas, so it's very simple to do. Uh, I happen to like a wireless one by Kurt uh, if you want to do that, but there's other ways to do that as well. Keep an eye on the stickers on your car for cargo carrying capacity and keep an eye on the speed and that kind of thing. So this is just an introduction to tow ratings. If you have questions about some of this stuff, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I kind of want to talk about this a little bit more in the future, and I think what we'll do is we'll pull a vehicle in here uh, with a trailer, and we'll go over it some more if that's what you guys want to see. So let me know in the comments. Do me a favor, guys. Hit the like button if this has been at all helpful, and uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel to see more, and uh, we'll go from there. So thanks, everybody, for watching. It's been fun.